This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Hi, I'm Rob and... I'm Ashley. And she is finally back. Welcome back, Ashley. It's so nice to see you again. Good to see you too. Everyone has been asking about you and I have told anybody nothing. (laughs) I thought about making up like odd random things like yeah she's out saving pygmies over in ghana or something <laughs> i just decided it, you just needed some time off and that was fine yes. with me <laughs> sounds good yeah so today ashley has come up with the idea to talk about a topic that might resonate with a lot of you um it's called love is possible after a brain injury yes okay hi Good. I nailed it. So Ashley, why don't you get us rolling on this? So when me and Rob had first talked, um, Rob's brain injury had happened while he was married to his wife. Mine happened before I met my husband. Um, So just wanted people out there to know that it definitely is possible to find somebody after sustaining a brain injury, concussion, post-concussion syndrome, whatever label you want to use, that there are people out there that are willing to love you for who you are and see you through um, the bad days. And uh, I was actually um, doing the online dating thing at the time when this happened. So I kind of let them know you know, because this was before we had a chance to even go on our first date, but we had started talking prior to the brain injury, which was my concussion happening and uh, told him, look, I understand. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be, you know, doing my physical therapy and occupational therapy, be out of work. Um, And he said he would wait for the date. And that's what ended up happening is once I had recovered, you know, we went on a date and, you know, that was back in 2016 and we're been married for two years. So I don't want people out there, you know, who've gone through this to give up hope on finding somebody because it's possible. I'm a living example of that. So I think it's awesome. One thing I want to ask you, and I don't think I've ever brought this topic up before because it just never really dawned on me. Um, had you dated prior to your concussion? And if so, how how did that differ from dating in your new brain injury life? Um, yes, I definitely dated prior to the concussion. Um, I think with the concussion, it actually helped me kind of slow down and not make judgments right away. Like people like, I don't know, some people I'd write off after the first date and not bother to give it like a second Mm. date. Whereas I think I was a little more like reserved, you know, going into it and a bit more open and receptive, you know, since the injury. So, I mean, I do think that that was something good that came out of the concussion was not to just yeah. write people off after a first date um, to just, you know, go in. Um, it did affect what activities we could do for the first date, though, because I know he had suggested the mall and that would have been like a disaster. Like, mm-hmm. He probably wouldn't have wanted to see me after that just because of all the sensory <laughs> stuff, lights, people, you know, um, everything you experience, uh, you know, post brain injury. So we were able to settle on like a lunch somewhere that wasn't very crowded. That was just like sit down, you know, so yeah. that affected it too, was you're kind of limited in where you can go and what you can do, but you still manage to make the most of it. So that's a good way to, to prepare each other for this is what life with me is like. You, you know, you got to take the whole package or you get nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty good actually. Yeah. 
I mean, I could see there's some positives and negatives in both with having the brain injury, but you know, if the good thing is if you're like me and well, I hope you're not <laughs> that you are going to really, they say, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. But come on. We do. Everyone does this. And how prior to your brain injury, maybe you would have given, um, my mind went blank. Zach. Well, Zach, thank you. <laughs> well, we just lost a viewer. <laughs> Sorry, Zach. I do know your name. <laughs> but prior to your injury, maybe you wouldn't have given Zach a second chance. Maybe you would have thought, mm, no, this is not the guy for me. But you were able to look past and see what he was really like. So that was a good thing. Yes. Cause you got to keep in mind, like, uh, your brain processes like are slowed down and inhibited during that period. So like you can't be working at the speed you usually work at. So like you're, at least I felt like I was second guessing a lot of things. Yeah. Um, at least for a year after the brain injury. So, you know, definitely, you know, making more like informed decisions because you need that extra time. Mm -hmm. And even after gosh, a year, five years, however long it takes, I think we're still going to have days where you go, Hmm, should I do that? Should I say that? You know? So I, I think it's just going to be part of our life going forward, but still, how much more would you have done before the brain injury? You know, if you're, if you're the type of personality that you always second guess everything. And I, I'm guilty of that myself, even to this day, I still do that. But sometimes it's nice to have a partner that will go, hmm, calm it down. <laughs> you're, yes. you're overreacting. Cause I know Sheila, she kicks in all the time whenever I am overreacting to the situation and she points out to me that I'm totally misunderstanding what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how was it like though, when you were, um, cause I assume you did the online dating prior to your concussion. Right. Did that become more challenging after the concussion to do the online dating? Uh, Zach was actually the only person I went on a date with after the concussion and we decided to be exclusive. So <laughs> it, it, it just worked out that, you know, like he was still around. So yeah, I didn't have to like talk to anybody else. It just, you know, kind of hit it off from there. So I don't know if what it would have looked like had I you know yeah continued afterwards you know what worries me with people with a brain injury online dating is that there are so many people out there that are scammers and are just looking for one thing yeah and i i mean personally i know people that are vulnerable to that that don't have a brain injury mm -hmm. so that that worries me of how easily it would be to fall into their traps out that are out there, you know, cause there's, there's online scams everywhere, but still on the, even in the dating world, how easy, how much more easier is it for them to go, Oh, well, this guy's got all the right answers. Well, I would definitely say don't advertise that you have a brain injury on your profile. If you're doing the online dating and I would like hold off until you actually really got a feel for the person before letting them know and then how much you want to let them know like definitely less is kind of more like don't give too many details um and then like if it ends up being like the right person if you want to elaborate that's fine yeah. but i mean i would definitely you know because of scams because of people being ignorant or not understanding you know you just got to use your discretion but i definitely recommend men don't advertise it you know the first time you speak to somebody or in your profile like have them get to know you first that's very good food for thought even if you're not that. doing the online dating even if you're 
meeting people naturally or being set up through like a friend or something, like make sure they know, like, I don't want it advertised that I have a brain injury. I mean, it, unless you feel like it's absolutely necessary for some reason, but yeah, have them get to know you first because you become, we are not defined by having a brain injury. We right. just happen to be people that have a brain injury. Right. Just like there are people out there that have fears of clowns or fear of heights or, you know, a mental health diagnosis, um, a physical disability, you know? Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah. That is pretty good. Pretty good food for thought. Yeah. yeah so, so don't give up hope on finding somebody. There's somebody out there for everyone. And I, I have a, a friend and I won't mention her name while she watches the show and I'm not throwing you under the bus, I promise. But uh, she does have a, I guess I would call it a low self-esteem. And she, she does have a hard time finding somebody. And she does quickly fall in love. Mm -hmm. And the, the advice that I always give her is just, go with the flow just see how it goes you know d just because the guy looks hot or has money or says the right things at the start doesn't mean he's always going to be like that there's a lot of guys out there that are jerks mm -hmm. so just enjoy it enjoy a free meal <laughs> and see how it goes because not everybody's a is a keeper well, also too, if you're struggling, I found it helpful to like take breaks and then revisit it once I felt better mm. about revisiting again, because it can be frustrating. Dating in general for people without a brain injury is definitely frustrating. So yeah. definitely, you know, give yourself some grace and take that break if you need to take that break. Or if you're on one online platform, try a different one or if you're not having luck with online dating, you know, try like an in-person event or ask somebody if they know somebody. But um, yeah, I mean, if you definitely find yourself, you know, in that rut, like just don't push it. Yeah, that's the worst thing you can do is pushing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you don't you don't want to invest a lot of time with the wrong person. Right. That's worse than just being alone. Yeah. And then you put a lot of pressure on yourself for like the day to go well. And then if it doesn't go yeah. well, then, you know, you're disappointed. So. Yeah. It's just an endless loop. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't put yourself in that situation. Yeah. And, but, I, and um, I've always just. Sorry. Go ahead. I was <laughs> I say, talk you. Nobody's ever. Uh, I don't know. If you've shown a picture of Sheila, but nobody's seen a picture of Zach. So this is Zach and me on our wedding day. And this was actually um, our first first look. Um, and you, I don't know if you could tell, but he was hysterically crying when he first saw me. Aww. So that kind of sealed the deal. That <laughs> I had chosen the right one. but um, yeah, yeah, Zach's a good guy. <laughs> Just so you can put a face with a name. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot your name again, Zach. <laughs> well, it could have been worse. You could have just been like, oh, Ashley and John. And I'd be like, well, who's John? <laughs> <laughs> you know, before I actually had a brain injury, I've always sucked with names. Always. Mm -hmm. um, I remember a long time ago, I worked at a bank and it, most people were called Sheila on a, on a good day, <laughs> but other days where these names came from, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But one day in particular, they were singing happy birthday and we all stepped out of our cubicles into the, into the hallway. And we're, when I got to the happy birthday, dear, I looked up at the lady's nameplate so I would get the right name. And yeah. another woman there totally busted me. She said, I saw that. <laughs> so so Zach, it's not personal, I promise. It's just, it's a Rob thing. <laughs> yes, a Robism. Yes. Add it to the book. <laughs> yes. Wow. I'm so glad that you're back and um, you're going to be taking a trip, I think. My Did parents I read live, that right? 
my parents live in a different part of the state, um, so I'm going to go visit them next week. So you'll miss, I mean, you'll see the podcast, um, but we won't be filming uh, next week. Uh, but yes, um, that's my little trip right now. So Yeah. So my best to the parents. Thank you. Yeah, and safe travels. And um, we'll see you when you get back. And this this has been all about you. And I'm so glad you're back. So I'll let you close the deal. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you have any questions for us, feel free to put them down in the comments. We'd be more than happy to uh, answer any questions. And we also have our Facebook group page and our Facebook support group, which Rob will put links in the video. If you haven't checked those out yet, definitely uh, hop on over. I'm Ashley. I'm Rob. This is Life Rewired. See you guys next week. Bye.